In this video, let's talk about one of the ways to help get rid of holes in your surface. So a quick tour of what we have is we have a topographic surface and a design grade surface. And I, thirdly, I have a merge surface where I have pasted the definitions of these two into um, that surface. So let's turn these two off, our beginning surfaces, and let's turn this merge one on real fast. Oh, let's do this. And if you're just looking at this, you will not see any immediate problems. There's just nothing jumps out of me that there is a problem or a hole in the surface at all. Which brings us to our first point, that if you're doing pretty much any surfacing or particularly uh, pacing of surfaces and manipulating of things, you're going to want to look at this in some method that will allow you to see those. You can do that by the surface style and maybe changing this from 2D wireframe to shades of gray or something along those lines. Or you can view it in 3D, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come over here and depending on the size of this, I'll try to view it in 3D and the horsepower of your machine. I'll tip this over on its side here and I can see my 10. Now, if I change the render method, this, I immediately see these whites. So if I zoom in, I got a hole. And holes are a problem in that if you're trying to do any volumetric calculations for earthwork or any comparison between any two surfaces, this is going to cause a problem. It's not going to calculate a comparison in these areas. So you need to get rid of them. I can just as easily have done that in this view if I had changed this to something that lets me see my triangles, like the contour triangles, and then change the render method over here. I can see it in here as well. So it just depends on if you prefer 2D or 3D. So I'm going to leave both of them open for the moment, and we're going to work over here. So one of the easiest ways of doing this, since I have, I know what's caused this, is deliberate. It's where I pasted two surfaces, and they there was a gap between the two surfaces. So it, it didn't know what to do, and the program did not triangulate across it. Even by manipulating my triangle links, settings, and stuff in my surface, it won't go away. So the easiest thing for me to do is to try to force Civil 3D to make a surface. And we're going to do that by adding boundaries. A boundary, but it's a hole. Boundaries go around the outside. Well, we're going to add a show boundary. So I'm going to select this and come over to my extract objects. Now I'm in a style that has the borders displayed. So I'm going to turn off everything but borders. And I am going to select for my drawing uh these two these two borders so i want to select this one whoops that one and this one and then we'll hit enter and okay now that i've done that i'm going to get this to the back and you should have a 3d polyline on top of this now if i try to select in this area I can see that there is a poly line there and it extracted a 3D poly. So now that I've got them extracted, I'm just going to simply select the two of them. And I've got my uh, selection cycler on since I've got so much stuff on top of each other. With them selected, I'm going to come over here and we're going to add them as a boundary to that surface. And this time I'm going to, instead of outer and hide, I'm going to actually choose show. You don't use this very often. At least I don't, but uh, and I sometimes forget about it. I hit OK. It did exactly that. It triangulated across it now, and it's it was basically making a hide on its own, and you have to come in and tell it, no, don't. Now I've got me uh, a surface that goes all the way across it, and I can do my volumetric analysis. So it's just that easy. So you extract them, and then you add them as a show boundary to help get rid of your holes. That's it. If you like this, please click like and feel free to subscribe.